Hello everyone, the time is here to make a new Fraudred PP guide. The patch is 10.1.5. Things have changed. We've got quite a few new talents since the last one. So it's time to make an updated guide. We're going to be covering everything you need to know from opener, rotation, gear, tear sets. Just everything you need to know for Feral PP will be in this video right here. So hopefully it helps. Let's dive into it. Okay, so let's dive into the builds. Maybe the most important part is your talents. It's very important to kind of get them right and also playing what you should be playing into whatever you're facing. So... Uh, the main thing I kind of want to communicate here is that there's two main builds. All right, we have the single target build, and that's kind of single target in quotations because you can still cleave with it, but it's going to be way less cleave heavy than the cleave build, which is the second build. So we have these two builds, single target and cleave. And then depending on the scenario, we're going to change between these two. Your gear will also change depending on the build you play, which we're going di to dive into a bit later in the video. Uh, so don't worry about that. But yeah, let's start off. With a single target damage build, which also has Cyclone. So yeah, for this build, it's probably going to look very, very uh, familiar. And that is because we have Swarm, we have Frenzy, we have BT. BT, by the way, got buffed recently. It's now three stacks, which makes it way easier to use. Basically, this build should be seeming fairly familiar to you. Let's kind of just dive into the opener and rotation of this build right here. See, this build might feel kind of familiar it's because it is like pretty much the kind of Shadowlands playstyle. We have Swarm, we have Frenzy. So in that sense, it's quite similar. But there are some key differences to kind of keep, keep in mind. Um, of course, we can have BT and Frenzy now, which was not a thing before. Uh, but it has been for a while in Dragonflight. But BT has now been buffed. It's up to three instead of two stacks, which is huge. Actually, a huge buff for that kind of went a bit under the, the table. But yeah, new talent, Dire Fixation. Huge. 8% more damage on your uh, shredded target for 10 seconds. By the way, I have a weak card for this. As you can see right here, if you want that, you can join my Discord. It's going to be in there. That's also going to be linked under the video. Uh, but yeah. Also, new talent, Wild Tumens and, and, and High Winds. It's not new, but the combination of these two is massive. If you're playing Cyclone, which we are doing in this build right here, as you can see. So yeah, the build, fairly standard, standard with these... Uh, New changes that have come since the last guide. Uh, but yeah, let's dive into the opener. So, when I'm going to open up with this build, we're going to be pressing Fury and Stealth, Rake. You can pretty much like Incarn instantly. So, Fury, Rake and Incarn, Frowl Frenzy, Swarm, Moonfire to proc BT, Rip, Shred, Bite, Shred, Bite, and then maybe proc a new BT. Something like this. If you want to see exactly what I'm doing, you can actually look down here in the... Uh, there. You can see what a build is missing and what order is happening in. If you want to slow it down afterwards as well. But let's dive into it. See again. Fury. Rake. And Incarn. Cirque. Swarm. Moonfire to proc BT if needed. Sometimes it actually bugs out and like you don't have to Moonfire instantly to proc BT. Uh, then we rip. Shred. Bite, shred, bite. That's like the main thing. Here we go. Opening up. Proc the BT. Press the rip. I'm gonna shred. Bite, shred, bite. Proc a new BT now by slashing, raking, new BT proc. Keep thrash up as well if you want to. It's like less prio, but it's quite nice to have. To to keep up. And just keep proc new BTs. Just rotate in. Your generators, so use three different ones in a row. If you like bite a few times without BT, it's okay. Optimally, you BT for, for all the bites. Um, but sometimes, you're going to have to send a bite without BT. So keep in mind, by the way, Incarn actually stores up to three overcapped combo points now. Which means that, uh, let's say you're getting way too many combo points and you want to proc a BT. It's a bit easier not to just, uh, just throw an extra... Uh, Generator was actually without actually wasting the uh, comb points, so that's very very nice. But yeah, that is the opener. Now it's gonna go into like what to do between the opener and the uh, general go or general rotation. So you did the opener, you have full blaze going. Now what? What do you do? The answer is probably more simple than you might think. Basically, just maintain your bleeds until the next stun. So you know, usually we're gonna have two stuns every one frenzy. So I do my opener go right. Like so, get full bleeds up. 
Again, same opener. We're blasting. Big bites, big bites. Of course, the enemy will also be, be trying to kill you at the same time. So between ghosts, a lot of it's going to be like trying to, to uh, line a sight. But one very important thing about Feldred. While you're lining, you want to have bleeds going. You, you can run, but still do damage. If you're running, but your bleeds are not up, which you sometimes have to do, but optimally you have bleeds up when you run. So you're having pressure while you're living. Alright, so keep that in mind. But yeah, so your main job between ghosts will just be to uh, maintain the bleeds. And if you can have like high uptime, you can just bite, weave in bites, proc BTs. Remember to, you know, do three different generators like Shred, um, Slash, Moonfire, Thrash. Like maintain these, keep proccing BTs. Maintain the rip and that is your job. Let's focus on that. As the Feldred, it is so important to maintain your bleeds. Practice this a lot, and you will go up in rating, okay? Trust me. Um, so you just kind of maintain the bleeds, and then suddenly you have Frenzy back, you have Storm back, you have Fear back, then we go. Okay, maybe Frenzy before, Maim, new Frenzy. Of course, now there's no Incarn. On this go, maybe we re the Meld Rake, and that's it. You can see my uh, rotation down here if, if you want to see the exact same, uh, if you want to try like replicate it. But it's like, get used to kind of tracking your bleeds. What is up? Rake is fading, then I rake. Thrash fading, then I thrash. Moonfire. Then you proc BT. Bite again. So yeah, it's probably simpler than you think, but it might just take time to kind of get used to. Just maintain those bleeds. Of course, you get a stun. Cyclone. That's a whole different thing, by the way. Like, cycloning, which we're going to get into in a bit, is huge. Especially with a build like this. Um... So yeah, Cyclone is also very massive. And also because we're Wild Tumors, we get a free Frenzy for every Cyclone. So if, if you can land clones between a go and then just get free Frenzies, it's going to be really, really insane. Like, if you watch my games in twos, which I do recommend doing, opening. Dreams, Rudimare. Fake Kick, Precog, Cyclone. One again. One again. Mame. Guys, right now we're, do we're doing the most. We're doing the most. Kill him. Dude. You're going to see that I cycle a lot and just get a bunch of free frenzies. And like very often, frenzy would be my number one damage um, on details. So yeah, but let's dive into the next part of the guide. So like I mentioned, Cyclone. So again, in the Cleave build, we actually don't play Cyclone. At least I don't. You could do a Cleave Cyclone build, but I'm not going to recommend it. I think it's maybe good in some very niche, niche scenarios, but I just want to keep this guide focused on the main two builds that I use in 99% of my games. So we're going to focus on that. By the way, Convoke is also quite fun to play, so I'll make a different Convoke at some point. Uh, but yeah, let's focus on the best main two builds right now see cyclone is actually a very very big part of the single target build um again wild attunement and, and high winds are great especially wild attunements it's such a good talent and it makes the, the feral place very very fun as well uh you might have seen like some of my games where like i'm doing a lot of cyclones actually i'm going to show a clip right now too of me doing that play style it's going to be landing clones getting frenzy swapping clone around maybe like cloning a target low frenzy the healer and then you clone the healer back in low target and frenzy again. Basically, you can get perma frenzies. And the thing is, the clone doesn't even have to land. Only that the cast has to be finished. So, for example, if I clone a pet, a totem, or clone into a clone, I will still get the, the wild attunement buff. And I get my cone points and my frenzy off, right? So, 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 so big. Just gonna try to simulate a little uh, situ situation here. Let's say I go in, I open up, right? I frenzy, I incarn, I'm doing damage, lasting hard. But for some reason now, I wanna swap the healer. What I might do is throw a root on the DPS, cast a fast clone, maybe with PI, because you have a priest on team, maybe, potentially. Free frenzy, right? Hit the healer, stun the healer, maybe. And I knows, oh, maybe he he used PS. You want to go back into BS? Clone him. Free Frenzy again. And I think, hopefully, you can kind of get the point here. 
that it's so nice to clone a defensive, swap over, then maybe force uh, something else and swap again. It's the perfect tool for swapping and having good pressure because that, that free frenzy and those comp points will really, really go a long way into just getting that instant pressure, and uh, it's really good. Keep in mind, it will be used on maim. So if you cyclone, you can do a maim, gives you a frenzy, you can rip and frenzy on that frenzy, and it will actually stack higher damage, as we'll see here. I'll show it now. One frenzy, 31k. Two frenzies, 41k. If, if you do it really, really fast on your show, you can actually stack it quite high. So just like spam now. Because they do overlap, as you can see. If I fear, we can do e even more. 62k. But yeah, get the point. They do overlap and stack, so it's like doing two at the same time with Swarm with Fury. It's going to be crazy, crazy damage. So yes, keep in mind, Cyclone is a great, great tool. And if you can master Cycloning, the art of Cycloning, that's going to be a great tool in your arsenal uh, for doing good in Shuffle and 2s and 3s in anything. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. But now let's dive onto the Cleave damage, opener, rotation, all the stuff. Okay, so actually, before we go into the cleave build, I'm going to touch on honor talents and when to play what. A very common question I get. So, to make it simple, we're kind of going to try tie them to each build. Okay, so you might have just seen the, the single target build as we showed now. I was playing with Wild Tumment, Wicked Claws, and High Winds. Okay? When I play Cyclone, I love playing these two because they're just so good. You get so much value. Especially, like, after a clone as well, High Winds is it's insane. And also getting all the free frenzies. That combination is really, really, really good and potent. Wicked Claws will depend totally on what you're playing. But I'll pretty much always play this. Uh, unless I'm playing with, like, a warrior or hunter that has their own healing reduction. Uh, but, yeah, like, baseline, I would say this is my honor, honor talent setup for my single target build. And now, for the cleave build, which we're going to dive into more in detail. But... When we go cleave, we don't play cyclone, right? That means that while two mint and high winds are dead talents, they do nothing. So of course we're gonna swap them out. What I swap to usually is leader of the pack, even though it just gives speed now and some healing. I still find it quite good, uh, also giving your teammate speed, and also king of the jungle, like so. If you're facing like a melee cleave or something, I think it's great to go thorns instead of leader because leader is not that high value, but I think it's pretty good. So, so obviously, like, in this scenario, leader is the one that you will change out if you're going to change something out. But same thing with Wicked. If you're playing with a um, class that already has heal reduction, you don't necessarily need this. Even though it can still be nice, you can spread it on, on everything. Uh, but yeah, this will also be situational. But, like, baseline, I would say this is what I play usually in Cleave. So yeah, there are the Arn Talents. There are, like, some situations where you might swap it out. Um, you might want to go, you know, strength sometimes if you want to be more tanky. Again, thorns. Or you can even go uh, ferocious wound instead of leader as well. But yeah. Overall, that's my most normal pick. Uh, normal pick and that's what I'm going to recommend the most uh, to you guys as well. Now, on to the actual cleave build. Damage, rotation, opener, all that stuff. So here is the cleave build. So uh, it's very, very similar to like last season. Not much has changed. There's a new talent called the Rising Life Fall Night, which is quite great. Fairly easy pickup in, in the cleave as well, because when we play single target, it's very hard to pick up, because we're not going uh, Boomy Affinity, at least not usually. There are some builds that do, but uh, not that I play at least. But yeah, in cleave build, it's a very easy pickup. It's right there. So that's good stuff. Beyond that, not much difference. I'm not going Dire Fixation in cleave. I just find it like to be kind of hard to pick up. Uh, and um, also, like, the, the value isn't that high when you're cleaving full. So, yeah, that is the build. Nothing too crazy. But it's really, really, really strong. So, yeah, now for the opener. But, guys, keep in mind, in, in this build, it's all about is bleeding everything, okay? Bleed everything, and that is your main objective. Rip, rake, thrash, low prio, but still thrash is good to uh, keep up. On every single target. Just ingrain that in your brain. And you will climb rating. Okay. So. When open up air. 
We have no swarm, right? But it's going to be still be fairly similar to the uh, other build in that we're going to Fury, Rake, Incarn instantly. We're going to Fell Frenzy. And then, of course, we have Primal Wrath to spread the bleeds. And we're going to try to hit as many targets as possible with the Primal Wrath and to start cleaving everyone. The Rips will proc us Bites because of Apex, and these Bites will buff our bleed damage because of Sabertooth. So, um,. It all just like really feeds into each other, which is kind of why I find this place out really fun. Is it's because your bleeds proc bites, and those bites buff your bleeds. So it's a very, very uh, synergistical uh, relationship between the bleeding and biting. See, so yeah, let me show it right now. I open up. Rake, Incarn, Frog Frenzy, Thrash, proc BT, and start spreading bleeds. Use like the actual radius of your uh, Prime Raft to like really spread those bleeds fully. Like so. And then when bite procs start coming in, you're going to be spending those. You pretty much only bite with procs in this build. Your main goal is going to be to keep up bleeds. as they should, They're going to fade kind of fast. So if you start biting without bite procs, it's going to be hard to actually maintain. But sometimes they'll bite like this. Bite. Bite. Can be very potent. I think I actually got double proc there, but yeah. Get the point. This is kind of what I do when I can cleave things fully. If it's like melee stacked or even just a small map with casters, then I bring out this build. Keep tr like trying to proc BT, by the way, as much as possible. The BT, if you, if you can have that up on like every bite and every rip, it's going to be a massive damage increase. And also, you know, this was way harder to do last season because there was only two stacks, now it's three. So BT is actually quite nice to play in Cleave now. Just like keep mixing, you know, your Slash, Shred, Rake, Thrash up. So you're kind of continuously procking it as you're going. Like, don't just, like, shred, shred, shred. I, I, I see, like, some newer fellas will shred way too much and, and just starve themselves on energy and, and then also not proc BT. Um, so, yeah, that is very, very important. Like I mentioned, guys, the radius on your actual Primal Wrath is massive because of Astral Influence, right? Okay, it's not 101 yards. That's very bugged. Uh, jeez. But yeah, it is wide. For example, if I stand here, right, I can hit all these targets. But if I'm on these guys, I'm only hitting three. So very often in arena, like, your spacing is really important, like, where you're standing. And I think this is, like, one thing that, that, that separates, um, you know, rivals from duelists, duels from glads, and glads to rank once, like, uh, the better spacing, the better you'll do. And also, they can't hit you. Let's, uh, let's say it's a warrior, right? And if I'm standing right here, it's going to be way harder for him to actually hit me if I'm using my range, getting bleeds, throwing in roots, doing bites. You go in, stun him up. Like, you got to be annoying like this. Like, ferals can be very annoying to face. And you want to be as annoying as possible for the enemy to deal with, right? But yes, that is a cleave rotation. Uh, we're also going to kind of touch on um, when to play what build. We talked about it a bit already, but it's a pretty hard thing to explain, but I'm going to try to just like explain it in the best way I can. So when we're picking what build we're going to be playing, but I think of a few things. Are we doing twos, threes, solo shuffle? For 2v2, usually I'll play my single target build. Unless I'm facing like a Demo Lock or Beastmaster Hunter, I think it's pretty much always the move. So keep in mind, in like 90% of games in twos, I'm playing single target. But into some things, I will still go cleave. But general rule of thumb in 2v2, single target is the move. Now, solo shuffle, it will depend a lot more. So um, the example earlier was like a big map with double caster. They're going to be so spread apart that actually cleaving it will be really, really, really hard, right? And then I'd go a single target option. But let's say it's casters, but it's maybe Blades Edge Arena. It's a way smaller map than I can still cleave because because everyone's going to be stacked on the bridge. Uh, now, of course, there's like many, many, many different scenarios here of different comps, different matchups, different maps. But just think to yourself, when the shuffle starts, will cleaving everything work here? Can I cleave many targets consistently throughout the whole game? If you can, then cleave might be the move. If you cannot, 
then single target might be the move. I'd say in shuffle is almost 50-50 what I go, just depending on on the factors we just mentioned. In 3v3, it's a very, very similar situation, but it also just comes down to what comp you're playing. For example, if you're playing a more setup-heavy comp, then you might not need the full cleave because you're going to be, you know, landing clones and kind of doing more setup. Uh, example might be like jungle, at least into some things. Uh, we're going to be doing more clinical goes. But even jungle sometimes you can go all out cleave. Let's say you're facing Wrestle Druid, Turbo. Two melees, a warrior, uh, enhanced ramen, and an R Druid. And you just want to go all out, just do the, do the most damage possible. Then cleave. But let's say you're facing Rogue Mage Priest. And you kind of got to just sit bare from b b between ghosts and kind of get good clinical goes when you can. Then cleave won't be the move and you're going to go play the single target build. So again, yeah, it's kind of like hard to say because I can't really just say play this thing always. But hopefully kind of get, get the, the gist of it and just play a lot of games, guys. Try things out in different scenarios. And with time, I think with not too much time, you got to kind of figure out when things work. But still for me, it's the thing that I got to think about. And sometimes it can be very hard to know what to play. And sometimes both builds can work just fine, right? So, uh, yeah, that's it. Now let's go on to gearing, embellishments, tier set, all the things. Let's get it going. So as you might have noticed so far, a lot of things are kind of tied to your build, and so is gear, at least to, to, to some degree. Hopefully not to a confusing degree, at least after I explain it. Because it is fairly simple, but uh, if you're kind of on your own, you, you don't know what's left, what's right, it can be very uh, overwhelming. See, so yeah, hopefully we, we can kind of bring some clarity to uh, to that right now. So, we have embellishments and tier set. Let's just kind of start with tier set because th this goes for, for both builds. So, when it comes to the question of should we use 4 set or not, some files are using 4 set. I've been testing it out on my alt, but at the time being, I'm not convinced about it at all. I think the amount of stats you lose for going 4 set, it's not really worth considering how low the uptime is on uh, the 4 set proc. Not to say it's like never the move or, or, or it, it is bad, uh, but it's not something that I want to recommend you guys. But uh, if you want to try it out, go for it. It's not bad. It's just not uh, good either, if you know what I'm saying. So yeah, when it comes to, to, to tear set, that is my take. I have it on shoulders and the chest uh, for the haste mastery. Again, I quite like the haste. The chest has a lot of haste, which is nice. You can also grab it on the hands and shoulders as well, but make sure at least you have the shoulders because they have the verse mastery. So again, this is my, uh, my single target build with Cyclone. So you can see my gear here. We got the headpiece. We got the neck, verse mastery, verse mastery he headpiece as well, verse mastery cloak, haste master chest, tear, drake breaker, wrist, verse mastery. We got haste verse weapon, insignia, medallion, haste verse ring, and verse master ring. You're going to see that the, the, the rings actually change a bit depending on my build, which you're going to see in a moment there. We got the crafted boots with the embellishment. We have the legs versus mastery. We have the waist versus mastery. And we have the gloves also versus mastery. These I should uh, replace with conquest because you get conquest versus mastery as well. So keep that in mind. Okay, so that is my single target build. Now you're going to see kind of what changes once we go to the, my cleave gear. I'm just going to change the, the build as well just because uh, it feels better that way. It just feels right. Have the right build and the right gear matched. So yeah, that is the gear I play, and a lot of it, most of it, will will remain the same, but you will see some key differences. Here we go. I call it Cleave Machine. Gear has been swapped. So, what just happened now is that the headpiece was changed because w when we're not playing Cyclone, we don't want Precog, right? Therefore, we don't want to waste an embellishment on that, so we're going the Verse Mastery Head, just Conquest. And now what we did, instead of having a haste verse ring, we grabbed the signet of uh, signet of satanic insight instead, with the mastery embellishment, and then we have double verse master rings to juice up that that mastery to get even more bleed damage. And when we're not cloning, we don't really need that that much haste, even though some haste is still nice, which we get from uh, insignia and uh, the chest and the weapon. Uh, but yeah, so. That's pretty much like the the only difference. The rest remains the same. So there's like some differences, 
But it's like fairly simple, guys. I recommend is make two sets, one called, you know, single target, one called cleave, or whatever you want to call them, and just swap between those two depending on the matchup. And uh, that is the best way to go about it. And yeah, guys, that is the gearing. Uh, my armor is going to be linked in the description as well. But keep in mind, sometimes I bring out the Convoke, which is going to be a subject for a different video entirely. Um, but yeah, that's the guide, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate you all. And I'll see you guys in the next stream or the next video. Take care, everyone.